Batman vs. Superman comes out next month, and because I am so excited, I wanted to spend a few weeks sharing some crazy Superman stories and, and maybe a few Batman ones. So today we're going to talk about the top five times Superman took it a little too far in the 1930s. So to be clear, all these stories are from the 1930s only. Eventually I will do the other decades, and none of these stories are canon anymore. They have long since entered retcon hell. So let's begin. First on our list of times Superman took it a little too far is from Action Comics issue number 10. And this story isn't too bad if you consider a superpowered alien slamming his vehicle into a fragile human for funsies, not too bad. It starts with a prisoner that escapes from a Quarry Town chain gang, essentially a place where prisoners are chained together to perform physically challenging work as a form of punishment. The prisoner talks to Clark and tells him the horrors of how they're treated at the chain gang, and Clark is so moved he decides he'll get the pictures of the cruelty down there to get it shut down. That's all well and good. How he goes about it? Isn't. Superman decides that he needs to be sent to prison in order to get these pictures. Instead of being Superman, quickly flying into the compound, taking some pictures, and sneaking out. No, he needs to go to prison. And you can already imagine where this is going to. To do this, he crashes his car into the superintendent's car, which could have caused death. He then gets out of his car and socks the man. He's taken to sentencing, giving them a fake name that he somehow managed, and after mouthing off, he gets sent to Cory Town. Here's the best part. He didn't need to do any of that. He is sent to Cory Town, and then that very night, he sneaks out and changes into Superman, goes back into the compound, and takes pictures of, of the cruelty and the things that they're doing there. He then traps the superintendent and has him confess to the governor, getting the conditions of the chain gang fixed. As Superman. Clark's fake identity, or why he even needed to go to prison, is never addressed in this issue. Sometimes, Clark's life gets a little tedious and he needs to feel the joy of human squishy flesh crushing beneath his steel fists. There's a lot wrong with Action Comics issue number 8, but let's just touch on a few of them. It starts with orphan boys that are stealing to make ends meet. Blah blah, the police try to arrest them, and Superman decides he's going to shape them up and steals them from the police instead. Superman then gets an idea in his head and wants to put the boys to work. He takes the boys to the slums, making them go door to door, telling the people to leave their homes and take their valuables with them. Minutes. Minutes later, Superman starts tearing down the slums. How does he think these people have enough time to grab their valuables and also get to safety? They come out of their houses seeing Superman just tearing up the slums. But Superman? Superman has a good reason for this. He doesn't like the slums, where these people made their homes, and he didn't ask if they wanted to live there anymore. So he just simply destroys the area, hoping the government will rebuild it with modern, cheap apartments. And Superman has never been happier, as he's destroying people's homes after giving them virtually no time to get their belongings or flee from this psychopath. And these people are terrified. They are going to the police and they are begging them, please, please make this man stop. Please stop him from destroying our homes and our belongings. And the police try. They try shooting Superman, they try bombing him, and, and the entire time Superman is just gleefully laughing as he's just tearing the shit out of their homes. And it gets to the point where finally he just has destroyed enough stuff and he leaves. He doesn't even bother clearing the area, he doesn't help them rebuild, it takes weeks to put new homes in there, and in the meantime, these people have completely been displaced from their homes and lost their valuables. Good job, Superman. Batman has no reason to fear your abilities. In Action Comics issue number 16, Superman takes on gambling. It starts when Superman stops a man from killing himself that lost everything to gambling. Upset the police commissioner won't clamp down on gambling, Superman decides he's the man for the job. He goes to a gambling club and proceeds to destroy everything. When this is addressed, and a man says if they want to gamble no one can stop them, or that they are willing to take their chances, Superman tells them that they're simply throwing their money away and they should give it to charity instead. Because screw their life decisions, Superman knows better. Although in Superman's defense, this gambling establishment was rigging their machines, making it so the gamblers couldn't win. I will give Superman that. But screw the law. Superman takes down the joint himself, 
wrecking the place, slapping around the workers there, and gives the money to the poor. But that isn't it for Superman's good deeds of the day. He's decided that he needs to do more, and after stalking a man and seeing that he was gambling, he approaches the man and tells him to give him his watch. Superman then takes the watch and crushes it in his hand. After destroying his watch, Superman looks him dead in the eye and tells him, If you don't quit gambling, I'll look you up and give your neck the same treatment. Hey, you do something for fun that's completely legal that I don't agree with? I'll snap your fucking neck. From there, Superman goes to gambling joint after gambling joint and destroys them all, and telling the gambling establishment owners to clear out, and if they're still in his city after 12 hours, he'll, and I quote, I will track him down and end his life with my own hands. You took it too far, Superman. You took it too far. In Action Comics number four, we learn that Superman not only has this amazing ability to disguise himself, but he also has a stash of hypodermic needles. This issue is messed up in a lot of ways, and will have its own video, but here's the general premise. Superman discovers a football coach is going to rig a game. So Superman, champion of the weak and helpless, decides to disguise himself as a football player to stop it. Instead of stopping robberies, murders, maybe people dying on the streets as we've seen in other issues, no, I'm sure that football game is more important than all those things. So he disguises himself as a football player, sneaks up on that player at night, sticks a hypodermic needle in him, drugs him, and brings him back to his apartment. He then leaves the man, rendered passive by the drug, for days in his bed to, I'm assuming, not have anything to eat and piss himself in bed. Superman let a man stew in his own waist while he went and played football. And then later, he willfully lets this man get captured by people that later plan on offing him. This story is actually a lot more fucked up than what I'm sharing, which is why it's going to get his own video. Superman had some issues in the 1930s. And number one, Action Comics issue number 12 is by far the scariest issue in the 1930s. And I just told you about how Superman drugged a man and let him lay in his own waist for days on end. So... Take from that what you will. By now you know that if Superman decides on something, everyone has to agree with him. And if you don't, he'll snap your goddamn neck. So this comic begins with Clark Kent arriving at a scene where a man is hit by a car and killed. A man he knew. And that sets Clark off. He calls the mayor asking why the auto accident rate is too high. And when he isn't given the answer he wants, he proceeds to go on a one-man crusade against auto accidents. Starting off okay? Things take a severe turn for the worse. Superman decides that he is going to break through the window of a radio station in broad daylight. He could have walked through the front door, but you want to know what? Fuck that. He's Superman. So he crashes through the window and tells the, you know, startled man because someone just burst through his fucking window to let him into the broadcasting room. And the man, understandably, says, hey, no, we're recording a program right now. You can't. And Superman tells him that he's asking for it, bursts through the door, fucking face palms the guy recording, and tells him, if you cut me off while I'm recording, I will choke you out. He then lets the city he loves know he has declared war on reckless drivers, and henceforth, they answer to him. He then exits through a wall of the radio station, and to be clear, we have no idea why he's just wrecking this place. We have no prior evidence in the comics of him disliking the radio station, having anything against it. He just first bursts through the window and then he exits out a wall in the radio station. And then at the end of this comic, when he goes back to the radio station and they've repaired all the damages and you see them just standing there proud of their work, he bursts right through it again and destroys it. It's never addressed why he does this. He's just a, a destructive person. From there, Superman goes crazy. Here's some highlights. He visits a county jail and the lot where autos of traffic violators are temporarily stored, and he just wrecks them. Because again, fuck the law. He's Superman. He visits a used car dealership and decides those cars are too dangerous, and he destroys all the cars in the lot, probably putting the man out of business and making him lose everything. And Superman is going around destroying the auto of any person that he deems is a hazard. And people are terrified at this point. They are calling the police. They are letting them know, 
you need to stop him. He, he's destroying our vehicles. Superman is even taking people's cars and placing them on top of their garages. Why, Superman? Why? Why you gotta be a dick? Then he caps it off with destroying a car factory he feels doesn't use the best material, putting at least a dozen workers out of a job. And he threatens the mayor to be tougher on car crime. Everyone is so afraid of Superman that they just do it. A cop hits a man because he's so scared of Superman. Basically, everyone in Metropolis is too terrified to do anything Superman might disagree with. Because, you know, when you're a super-powered alien, you have no idea when you're, you're taking it too fucking far, Superman. So you decide whose team you're on. Superman, a crazy maniac that abuses his power and forces his will on others? Or a man that sees him for what he is in Batman vs Superman and is simply trying to save others from this monster? I know whose side I'm on. Superman's. Because I'm, I, I, I'm terrified not to be. So thank you for watching, make sure you like and subscribe, come back every week for new comic videos, Game of Thrones videos, Star Wars videos, and more.